Hello everyone, this is Karen Fomafong, your Agile Evangelist and welcome back to our channel where we continue to explore different ways to be better with business agility. If this is your first time here, you're extremely welcome. Please smash that subscription button and turn on the notification bell so you will not miss out on our weekly Agile content. So today we're going to be discussing a topic that is mostly overlooked, however, extremely important. And this topic is how do you add value to a team that is already mature or is already highly performing as a scrum master? So this particular topic, you know, brings its own challenges from a team that is pretty new to agile because a team that is pretty new to agile and it's a newly formed team it's definitely obvious that you have a lot of opportunities to be valuable to that team as an experienced scrum master from a team that is already mature. So to explore this topic, I'm going to be addressing this topic by sharing with you my real life experience on supporting teams with that kind of dynamics. And then secondly, I'm going to be tailoring this um, tailoring a sample answer that you can use for your interview. And by the way, this is an interview question. So one of my mentees had this question in an interview and which is why I'm addressing it today. So please stay tuned and watch to the end so that at the end of it all, you will have insightful knowledge. And then secondly, you will have a draft that you can go build or customize to take to your interview so that you are smashing that interview. Now let's get started. So how do you as a scrum master, how do you add value to a team that is already pretty mature? This team is already highly performing. Now in my experience, supporting a team that was set to be pretty mature. The very first thing I did when I joined the organization with already that mindset that the team is pretty mature is that based on my experience, I already have this perception when every time they say a team is already pretty mature and then me getting to start working with that particular team, I still always find so many opportunities to improve. You see, so first of all, think about it. If the team was already pretty good, this, they would not even need to want to hire a scrum master. That's already one indication that there is still so many ways that you can be valuable to that team. So that's how I think about it right now, me in my experience joining a team and the set, this team was pretty mature. So that I wanted to know for myself. Yeah, I've already been told this, but I wanted to go from um, an empirical place. That's how we function as Scrum Masters, right? I wanted to come from an empirical place. So the first thing I did was I had to first understand the team's reality. I wanted to understand the team's context. I wanted to get a full picture of where the team is at so that I can know how to come in and start adding value. That was the first thing I did. And how did I do that? I did that by asking for their historical data. I went into their metrics, you know, if they were already using some, but in this case, they had some metrics going on. I went into their metrics, such as their um, velocity. I went into their average cycle time. I went into their sprint health um, historical gadgets. I went into the uh, um, release um, burn down. I went into their, their committed versus completed. I went into their, their team charter, you know, to really understand a full picture. And then I, I went into their product backlog. So with all of that, I conducted, you know, in interview questions through with the team members to really understand where they are. And after doing that, I was able to gather a lot of insights. And from doing that, I could identify comparing the data that I've gathered from talking to individual team members, assessing their historical information. I could see a lot of misalignment. That right there was an opportunity to improve. There's a lot of misalignment. Now, from an informed stand place, the very next thing I did was I brought this information to the team so that together we can have a conversation and align on where we truly are. So this team was already great with performing. You know, they were delivering. 
However, they could still improve. But on the speed of delivery, the efficiency of the delivery was the issue. So um, after I brought this insights to them, the very next thing that I did was I continued to empower them because this team didn't have any issue to take charge, take ownership of the work. So I continued to empower them through retrospective. That was the second thing I did through retrospective so that we can have open, honest conversations. And with that, they are taking account of the action items that have been identified to improve. You see, so for teams that are not mature, they would want to run, um, they would want someone to follow up on these things for them. But this team, I continue to empower them to take ownership of these action items. That was something that they were not doing before. So look at it this way. For a soccer team that has a coach, the team is already great. The team is already scoring goals. The team is already doing all this great stuff. If this coach leaves the team, the team will definitely fall back to their old ways, you see. So which is why we cannot say we don't need a coach because we're already that good. It doesn't happen like that. So it's the same for a scrum team. The, a scrum team always needs a coach so that even if the team is that good, there'll be times when they want to go back to their old way. So as a coach, you nicely guide them back to stay on the line, you see, to stay on the line so that they continuously deliver. They continuously be efficient. They continuously look for opportunities to improve. There is always an opportunity to improve. That's the agile mindset we have. We are never at 100 on 100. We are always striving to get there, but we never get there. That way we continuously look for room to improve. So as a scrum master, that's how I was impactful to these teams. So there'll be times when they want to go back to their old ways and then I will step in and then remind them, continue to empower them to just do things right. Even And then the third thing again, even around their metrics. Yeah, they were already using some metrics, but what I realized was that they were not aligned on the purpose of the metrics. They were using it for, for, for leadership. They were not using it to really, for, really for teams, for themselves, to really be able to, as information radiators, so that they can see opportunities to continue to improve. That was not why they were using it. So I seized that opportunity to really help them understand and see their data. You see, so they were able to see and better understand their data. And then I, I established or reestablished a purpose of metrics. And then I even helped them uncover some metrics that they already had in the tool they were using at that time, which was Jira, but they didn't know that they could take, take advantage of these things. So I helped them uncover those ones and they were using it. And then another important thing that I did was this team was already delivering. But one thing that I noticed was that they were very skilled focus they were ready, they were very specific skilled focus which means that the team was not a t-shaped skilled team so each individual was very good at a specific skill now i saw that as another opportunity so that we can continuously learn and improve i wanted them to be more cross-functional so i helped them understand the concept of cross-functionality and through conversation we established um, a weekly knowledge sharing session where we would connect as a team and then a, a person that is already good in a specific area will cross train the rest of the team on that on, on on the very interesting topic that is valuable to the team and gradually that is how this team became more cross-functional as opposed to just being very skilled specific per individual so we got to a point through my coaching and mentorship where team members had an understanding of a little bit of everything in the team so they could support in every area which wasn't there before and they didn't think they needed that so that's another way that i had helped the team and then another great way that i helped the team was that i served as a middleman between stakeholders and the team you see so that the team can have more time to focus on things that were more important as opposed to you know sitting in the stakeholders meetings that i could be of help you see yeah even though consensus and alignment is very important so for information that the team the entire team this didn't really need it to be there i served as that middleman i served as that liaison between lead between stakeholders and the team and that really helped um save time for the team and help 
kept them focused on the things that was that were most important so those are some of the things that i did for that organization and we just continue to learn and we continue to improve you see so those are some of the ways that i have helped um my team the team that was already, that was set to be already very mature to be better now that is it for my own real life experience for the sake of your interview if they ask you how have you supported or how can you add value to a team that is already pretty mature and they are already highly performing before we go into this topic i just want to say this our, you know, we are already running to the end of the year. Our upcoming classes for Scrum Masters, Agile Coaches, Safe Scrum Masters starts on the 2nd of November. So if you want to get into this field, you are just a starter, please, right now, visit our website. That's the information right there. Being Agile Consulting and learn more about our programs and enroll. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. I'll be more than happy to help you. If you are already certified, you already have the foundation knowledge. We all know I've been singing this like forever. That is not good enough. That's already like only 11% of your journey. How about the remaining 89%? It's what we do in our level two mentorship and coaching program. A mentorship and coaching program helps you have the experience you need, boost your confidence, refine your competency, transform your vocabulary, give you the support you need, give you that opportunity to partner with peers that you all are heading to the same direction and overall just impact you with knowledge, you know, so that you're acing your interview and you're being successful on the job. You see, so if you are in between like that transitioning please reach out to us through our level two mentorship program out i can tell you you'll be able to uncover things that you couldn't you you've never thought about and that's how you will land the job and be successful on the job if you are already working as a scrum master and you just need that support system to help you be more valuable to your organization or help you be more confident our level three program is designed for that. So enroll today and we can help you be more valuable to your organization to create impact and just stand out instead of feeding in. If you are already an, a functioning agile practitioner, like a scrum master, agile coach, product owner, and you're, you're interested in becoming an agile coach, or you want to deepen your knowledge in Agile Coaching, please enroll in our Agile Coaches Mentoring Program. It's a fantastic program that helps you become a, a, a wonderful Agile Coach and just be different in your environment and be more valuable. Same for our Safe Scrum Master Program. So we have different Safe Scrum Master trainings going on. This is only two days certification training programs. We all know that most of these gigantic organizations, for some reason, they love using SAFE and they would prefer someone with a SAFE background. So we can help you achieve that. So please join our upcoming SAFE Scrum Master training programs for amazing prizes and we'll be more than happy to help you through this journey. Thank you very much. Now, let us keep going for the sake of your... How can you add value to a mature team as a Scrum Master? You will say this, thank you very much. I have been fortunate to be in an environment where the team was set to be already mature. And what I realized was that the challenges that comes with that is quite different from a challenges that comes with a team that is set to be pretty new with Agile. Now, after joining this organization, one thing that I realized is that we always have opportunities to improve. This team thought they were already very mature. They were very good. However, I was still able to identify so many opportunities to improve. And first of all, think about it. As um, so I like you to see a scrum team as a soccer team with, with a coach, right? There will never be a time when that soccer team would not need their coach, regardless of how good they may be. Because that coach always has to be there to make sure the team is on check. Without that, the team, that's just how human mind function. The team will gradually lean back to their natural. And their, their, their natural would be their developers. That's what they've been designed to do. That's what they are called to do. Even if they can support themselves, 
we still always need that coach to guide them on the efficiency on how to deliver, not just the what they are delivering. How they are delivering what they are delivering also is very, very important. So that is how I come in. That's the first thing I help them understand that there is always room to improve. Once I had I established that, I went ahead to really understand the full context of the team. I went into their historical data because I am very particular about empirical way of software development. So I lead by example, understanding their empirical um, metrics, also talking with the team, had interviews with the team to really understand their full perspective on where they at so that I can now start identifying opportunities to improve. And then after I had that conversation with the team, I realized that, yeah, they were great. They were delivering. However, there were a lot of misalignment on how to deliver. I also looked at their team charter. And one thing I noticed was that yeah, they had a good team charter established, but they didn't have a clear definition of done. That's also something that I helped them establish with a clear definition of done. And given that I was also new to the team, we used that opportunity to reset as a team. And then moving forward, the team was already great with delivering, like I said, but the speed of delivering is something they were already struggling with. So, um, Another thing that I did was I helped them to see and understand their data because they had all these metrics going on, but they were not really exploring the full potential of the metrics. So I helped them achieve that. A typical example would be they were working with velocity, but they did not understand the true meaning of average velocity and how they can leverage that. They actually thought that every sprint they needed to increase velocity. With my help, they were able to understand that the purpose of velocity was only to help them become predictable. You see, so that was an eye opener for them. So through my guidance, we were able to establish an average velocity and then the team could confidently tell someone what they are capable of delivering every sprint. And leadership was able to benefit from this information to make predictive business decisions. And then I also helped these teams establish um, a, a cross-functional collaborative environment. They were already collaborative, but what was missing was cross-functionality. This team was already great with specific knowledge area. However, they could use the ability to know a little bit of everything. That way, even if we have to lose a team member, it's not going to be a huge problem. So after pointing out this opportunity to improve to them, they agreed that let's establish a weekly um, knowledge sharing session where team members that are great on a specific area can cross train the rest of the team in, this area, in, in that area. And gradually, that's how we became very, very cross-functional where we could support each other without any worry. And then another thing too that this team was doing was that um, so they would have all this um, opportunities to improve, right? They would identify these things during retrospective, but they were not taking action on these things because they were so focused on delivering. So I, so I seized this opportunity to empower the teams, reminded them of the whole essence of agility to help teams become um, self-managing and self-organizing in the future. So through retrospective conversations, I would ensure that I would empower them to identify who will own action items. And then secondly, I will empower them to I, um, come up with the solutions by themselves and then follow up on these action items unless they truly needed me to come in, you see, and then I can step in so that they could focus on doing more valuable work. So in essence, those are some of the ways that I had helped my team that was already pretty mature to become even better with the whole concept of continuous learning and continuous improvement. There is always a room to improve. So that was a mindset I helped establish them with. And clearly, from a data-driven standpoint, going by their historical information and all of that, I could clearly point out some of the things that they could be better at, even though they were already doing great. And they embraced it, which was they made my life easy by doing that. And that is how we became even better. And they knew that they would never get to 100 on 100 because that's how we want it to be so that we could always have a reason to continuously learn and grow. So 
That is how I was able to impact a team that was already performing, but they could do better with the way they were delivering work, you see. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much. And please, for more videos, make sure you smash that um, subscription button, switch on that notification bell, share these videos if you appreciate the content. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.